Welcome to episode 16 of season 5 of the Gospel of Gimmicks podcast. Today we're going to go without the notes again and I want to talk to you about standing for God all alone. Let's get after it. Hello and glad you could join me for the Gospel Lord Games podcast. I'm your host, Richard Storm and Norman, here to tell you everything I know and some things I highly suspect. With my beard all crooked, that's from sleeping. I combed it today. Today, I'm once again going to go noteless, if I can never get this microphone where I want it. It seemed to go well last time, so I thought we'd do it again. So today, I want to look, I've got three stories from the Bible of people who may have felt I'm not, I, mean, I can't read your mind so I don't know if they really did feel this way one of them at least did but they, they must have felt like they were standing for God all by themselves but uh, they weren't and neither are you and we'll get into that a little bit later before we get into that though how are you doing uh, this today is Sunday Been, I've done a lot of things today I got up this morning and uploaded my uh, Sunday school video. Then I watched the church stream. Then I wrote a essay for school, eleven hundred words. And then I'm gonna now I'm gonna record this, and maybe hopefully I'm gonna watch one of my school videos. So I ain't got but one left to watch tomorrow. But we shall see exactly how that goes about. And then there's other things I got to do that we'll get to in just a minute. Coronavirus update, looking pretty good, starting to look pretty good. Some lockdowns are being eased, really, in my opinion, there shouldn't have been any to begin with, but it is what it is, and they're starting to ease up on restrictions, and uh, we'll be back to normal before you know it. T-shirts are still available on the Teespring store. I don't know if anybody bought one. If you did, they didn't send me no. I don't know if they. I don't know if they send you an email or something like, "Hey, somebody bought a shirt from your store." I don't know if they do that, but if you did, they haven't told me. So, I guess nobody's bought one yet. But I have. I bought one. I bought me and my wife one. But you can still get the t-shirts. They're still available on uh, the Gospel Lord Gimmick Store at Teespring. I'll post the link in the description. And then I got some bad news. Yeah. So, last week, I don't know, it was like Monday or Tuesday, last week, my wife got a call from the landlord, and her son is needing a place to live. So, guess what? <laughs> I gotta move. So, and I'm not mad about it, you know? I mean, when I, when I moved out of here... You know, I wanted it to be on my own terms, and I wanted to be like, "Oh, we bought a house, and we're moving into a house." But you know, that's not that's not the uh, not the case. We've only been here about six months, but we got to move, and that's fine because we found a place uh, down the street, and it's bigger. Got a bigger yard, got a garage. I can't tell y'all how stoked I am about in a garage, but I got to move, which means I got to pack. And I have a lot of stuff. You see the box. <laughs> if you're watching on the YouTube, my wife's already started, already started packing, and that I got that box. We're gonna get some more boxes, but that's the box I have at the moment for me to put some stuff in. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna put in it. But we gotta pack it up. We gotta move it. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is cancel next week's episode, so there won't be an episode next week. Because we got to move, and it's a pain in the butt. I'm sure if you've ever done it, you know. Uh, so we got to pack up. We got to move. I got to get all set up, the studio equipment, in a new location. Plus my wife, she's going buck wild in this house, the next one, painting and cleaning and all kinds of stuff. So 
it's there's stuff to do there's stuff to do before i can get back to doing this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to not have an episode next week possibly not have one the week after that but i don't know i'll keep you i'll keep you updated as 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 time goes on but we definitely won't have one next week because i need to get packing and loading up and moving stinks but that's what you know it's life but we'll be back in a week or two and uh yeah everything will be fine everything will be fine so uh that's the that's the update on that so it stinks but sunday school y'all said if y'all noticed i posted my sunday school video for my church uh on on the uh youtube channel so because last week i recorded because i tried to do it live and my internet's really bad for live of course my internet at a new place will not be bad because it's down the street from my best friend's house and he has good internet so i'm assuming i'll be able to get the good internet too but but uh i tried to do it live it cuts in and out the sound is messed up so last week i recorded it but when i went to upload it i started uploading it before i went to bed and when i woke up the next morning it still wasn't uploaded so i'm like well dang gotta figure out something else so i was like i guess i'll just upload it to my youtube channel because it doesn't take but an hour or two to do that so that's what i'm that's what i'm gonna do from here on out until we're able to get back at church is uh i'll post it up my sunday school lesson on the youtube channel so y'all can watch it if you want to you're more than welcome but then i can take it from there and share it in my church's facebook group and so on and so forth so just thought i'd give you a heads up in case you thought that was the episode for that was the next week's episode it is not it was just something i'm kind of i have to do by necessity so that's all we got for the opening segment let's go ahead and get into the main topic standing alone for god all right so we're going to look at some stories we're going to read some scripture and uh talk about some people who must have felt like they were all alone and they weren't all individuals either First, we're going to go to the book of Numbers. I believe it's chapter 13. I have, I don't have notes, but I did write down which passages I'm going to go to. Numbers 13. So to summarize, you know, don't want to get too bogged down, but God told Moses to send some, send some uh, spies, if that's, that's what most people call them, send some spies into the land just check it out you know just check it out so he did he picked 12 12 spies which is what god told him to do one from each tribe in israel and sent them into the land so they've gone into the land they've seen the land the fruit the people living in the land so on and so forth and we pick up in verse 26 and they went and came to moses and aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites, dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature and there we saw the giants and sons of anak which came 
which come out of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight then chapter 14 verse 1 and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried the people wept that night and all the children of israel murmured against moses and against aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would god that we had died in the land of egypt or would god we had died in this wilderness and therefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, 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 which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us a land which floweth with milk and honey. So they sent twelve spies. Moses sent twelve spies to check out the land that God had given them. Now, God has given them this land. So, if God has given you something, does, do you think to yourself, well, I hope I can get it. No, if God gave it to you, you're going to have it. You're going. That's the mentality they seem to have lacked here. But, they sent the twelve, one from each tribe, to spy out the land. And they saw. All, they all saw the same thing. They all saw the fruit, how good the land was for farming. They all saw how big the people were, the walled cities. But yet, ten of them let their fear get a control over them. They didn't focus on the land being good for farming. They didn't focus on the fruit. They focused on all the people there are bigger than us. All the, they got walled cities. Oh, they're great, more great and powerful than we are. They didn't focus on the fact God gave us his land. If he gave it to us, then that means they don't stand a chance against us. Only Caleb and Joshua had that mindset about them. They must have felt like, how in the world is this happening? It talks about there in that one verse, and Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, however you say that, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. You know what that means. They tore their clothes. Because they're sitting there like, dude, y'all saw the same thing we saw. You know? You saw it too. But yet, you no, know, how aggravating is that when someone is just straight up, you know, being negative like that. But Joshua and Caleb, they're like, no, dude, we can take them. We got God, they understood, like, if you go, if you read the story of David, we've talked about this on the podcast before, you go look at the story of David and Goliath, and get David come down, he heard Goliath running his mouth, and he's, t and he's looking at the army that are afraid, like, dude, what is wrong with you? Why are you letting this dude run his mouth? Because in David's, you know, mindset, God was on their side, so therefore there was no enemy they couldn't vanquish. So there, he's sitting there wondering, why are you letting this giant talk mess about the Lord's army? Why aren't you doing something? And that's the same way with Caleb and Joshua. They're going to the land. They look at the land. They see the, you know, all the good things in the land. Granted, there's some big old dudes. There's some walled cities. But in their mind, they're like, but we have God on our side. Like, that ain't nothing. You know, it's the same mindset David had. They're like, they're looking at all the other, the 10 spies that disagreed with them and thinking, why, why don't you understand this? You know, they might have felt like they were alone. Now, granted, there's two of them, but they might have felt like they were all alone. You know, sometimes we can get that way when you're trying to be a real Christian. You're trying to live right according to the word of God. And you got all these other Christians, so-called Christians that you see everywhere just doing whatever, you know, just 
allegorizing the Bible and not taking it literally and just being like, oh, we can do whatever we want. And you're like, well, the Bible says, oh, yeah, but it don't really mean that, man. It's just you got to understand the feeling behind what the author was trying to say, you know. No, the Bible says what it says. And we got all these Christians. We got some Christians out there trying to live for God, trying to raise their family for the Lord. Trying to go to church, and you got others be like, oh, church, you know, it ain't that important, bro. It ain't that important. And and you might feel like you're all alone because you stand on the Word of God, but you're not all alone. What happened to uh, Joshua and Caleb? Well, of these 12 spies that were sent to spy out the land, only Joshua and Caleb entered the land. All the rest of them. Nope, they didn't get to enter the land. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that did. So that's the first one. Now we're going to go look at a familiar one. Prophet Elijah, 1 Kings 19. We're going to read verses 10 through 18. And he, and he, well, let me go read and read 10. Uh, let me go ahead and read verse 9. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the lord came to him and said unto him what doest thou here elijah and he said i have been very jealous for the lord god of hosts for the children of israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and i even i only am left and they seek my life to take it away and he said go forth and stand upon the mountain before the lord and behold the lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle. And went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass, that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So, this is a pretty common story we've heard. Probably heard preachers preach on this one. Where you got Elijah sitting there feeling sorry for himself. He's sitting there thinking to himself, Boy, I'm the only one out here trying to live for God. Trying to do the right thing. And now they're trying to kill me for it. You know, I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me for it. And what does God say there in verse 18? Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed them. 7,000. He's sitting there feeling all sorry for himself, having him a little pity party. And God's like, hey, you ain't by yourself. Get up. He's like, I got 7,000 in Israel who ain't bowed down to Baal, who's still serving me. And we can get that. I know I can get that way sometime myself. You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one that you get to feel like, man, everybody's so wicked. Like everybody is just trying to live for themselves and do whatever they want to do and not even think about God, just push him out of the picture completely and Man, am I the only one? You can get to thinking that way. Now, technically, you you know you're not the only one, but you can get to feeling that way. Like, you can be at work thinking like, man, am I the only Christian here? And then, lo and behold, 
you meet somebody and you find out they're a Christian too, or you anywhere you go or you go on a regular basis and you find out, oh, they're a Christian too. Oh, I'm not alone. You know, just when you think you're alone, you might think you're the only Christian you work with and then God will send another one your way and be like, you know what? I ain't in this alone. 7,000 have not bowed the nail to the, the need to bail. Whenever you think you're alone, you really ain't. There's other Christians out there who probably also think they're alone too. Now we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter number 4. We're going to read verses 9 through 18. Do thy diligence to come shortly. Now we know, before I start, we know that this was Paul's last letter he wrote was Second Timothy. This was he was waiting for execution. This is his final words of his final letter. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou what of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At at my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now here's Paul. He's in prison. He is sitting in prison waiting to be executed. And what does he say? Only Luke is with me. He even says before that, Demas hath forsaken me and loved the present world. And he left and went to Thessalonica. Crescens left to Dalmatia and Titus went to Dalmatia. Or Galatia and Titus went to Dalmatia. Everybody left him. You know, and that's... You find somebody in that situation, they're in prison, you know. I mean, what can you do? But if they're about to be executed and you can be there, I guess the reason we don't understand it is because we don't face that kind of persecution. But it said there in verse 11, Only Luke is with me. And then he asked that they bring Mark. And we know the story with Mark. And him and Paul didn't always have a good relationship. But now Paul's asking for him. Only Luke is with me. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil, it says in verse 14. So here's Paul in prison. The only person he's got with him is Luke. I don't know how prison was back then. If Luke like, talked to him through a crack in the wall or what exactly how visitation went down you know, like back then. But that's all he's got. He's got Luke. Everybody else has forsaken him or done him wrong. And listen to what he said about Alexander the coppersmith. The Lord reward him according to his works. That's a very nice way of, you know, we go, I hope you this and that, you know, I hope this happens to you. He didn't say that. He just said, Lord, I hope that you reward him according to his works. That's all I'm going to say. But Paul understood, you know, we talked about uh, Caleb and Joshua they had each other. They agreed with each other that the land was they should go into the land and take it. But they had ten people against them. And then we read about Elijah, who didn't think that he he thought he was all alone, and God had to show him. But then we get to Paul, who's all alone in the prison cell with just Luke. But Paul doesn't think he's alone. You know, he doesn't think that he's in this by himself. Now, granted, he's got Luke there, but not in probably not in the prison cell with him. So, 
he's alone, about as alone as you can get, you know, being in prison. I mean, the previous people we talked about, they weren't in prison, but Paul's in prison. But he don't think he's alone. We, as we see there in verse number 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Paul understood he wasn't alone. Paul understood that Jesus was with him. You know, that's the reason why you can never stand... All right, now where was uh? <clears throat> that was my sister. But Paul understood that he wasn't alone; that he had Jesus with him. In verse eighteen, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will pre preserve me unto the heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He understood. It don't matter what happens. It don't matter how alone I am. I'm not alone. Jesus, it says, stood with me. The Lord stood with me. And no matter what happens on this earth, what happens afterward is what's most important. So let's go real quick in closing to Matthew 28, 20. We'll read 19. We'll start in verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus done told us that he is going to be with us even unto the end of the... So basically, if you're a born-again Christian, there is no point in which Jesus is not with you. So in them moments where you seem like you're surrounded by the, you know, the devil's army, you're surrounded by wicked people that just want to sin and don't want to care anything about God, and you're standing on that blood-stained banner of the Bible, King James Bible, but you're standing on the uh, Word of God, just know that Jesus, you are not alone. Jesus is with you. And there's probably other Christians not far from you feeling the same exact way. That's why we, that's what's so important about, you know, having church and coming together into a church building on Sunday and getting together in the church and going, I'm not alone. You know, you felt like you were alone all week long. And then then Sunday morning you get together with all your brothers and sisters and you're like, oh, it feels good to be with people like me. Feels good. That's all I got for today. Appreciate y'all listening. Let me get my uh, intro and outro notes. For social media links, a biography of your host, a list of places you can get the podcast, visit the website at gospelovergimmicks.org. If you would like to financially support the podcast, you may do so at patreon.com slash gospelovergimmicks. And this is a list of our lovely patrons, patrons, Roger Waters, Leanna Williams, and Rusty Williams. Wonderful group of people. Can't say enough kind things about them. If you got any comments, any questions, any suggestions for a show that you would like to see in the future, you may contact me at gospelarguments at gmail.com. That's how you can get a hold of me. I actually had somebody send me a message on the website last week. Like, I didn't even know you could do that. Like, I got a email from Wix that I had a message. I don't even like I said, I went and replied to it. Uh, I found out how to do that. But I was like, I didn't even know you could do that. Hmm. Learn something new every day. If you like what you saw today, subscribe, like, share, follow. Uh, all those other good things that you can do. That'll help the podcast out. Those are some free things, you know. Just like, subscribe, take this video from YouTube and share it on your Facebook or whatever. and Or from the podcast app that you're listening to. Share it. Those are some free things you can do to help out the podcast. And finally today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then I, or, I urge you to do so. Just believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved, brother. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing you got to do. You just got to believe. 
So that's all I got for you today. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And like I said, there won't be an episode next week. And we'll try and come back the week after that. I'm thinking it shouldn't take me two weeks to get this done. But you never know. You know, life throws you lemons sometime. So we'll miss next week. Hopefully we'll be back after that. If not, I'll keep y'all up to date on what's going on. Okay. I appreciate y'all. Till next time. Take up your cross. Carry on. So apparently there's more than one version of this song, I guess. Because I looked up the lyrics and they were totally different from this one. But this is Rock of Ages by the Osborne Brothers. At least that's the version I have on my Spotify playlist. And their lyrics are apparently different from other lyrics. But anyway, it's called Rock of Ages. <clears throat> oh, thou blessed rock of ages, trusting now, dear Lord, in thee. Keep me till my journey's ended. Till thy blessed face I see. Hide me, O blessed rock of ages. Till thy blessed face I see. When the storms around me rages, Rock of ages, hide thou me. I know that was awful. <laughs>